start recording. So here we have a new one topic, uh, which is latent class analysis. Uh, once again, uh, for those of you who are Czech students, uh, so you can find the chapter about latent class analysis. Uh, this is the last one uh, chapter uh, in a newly published uh, book uh, uh, for advanced uh, data analysis. Uh, uh, in this book, uh, this latent class analysis is described in SPSS environment, uh, but uh, as uh, the implementation in SPSS, uh, as well as in Gemmovi, uh, is from the same R package, uh, uh, so inputs as outputs are nearly the same, uh, so it really doesn't matter uh, whether we apply latent class analysis in a SPSS environment or uh, uh, GMOV environment. Uh, today, uh, I expect uh, we will not finish all discussion about latent class analysis. Uh, uh, so that's why I will be using only GMOV. Uh, next week, uh, uh, I will show you also brief introduction uh, into SPSS uh, application for latent class analysis. But once again, uh, these dialogues are nearly the same as both are applying uh, our package, uh, which is called POLCA, uh, according to my opinion, the best package uh, for latent class analysis in R. Uh, so uh, they are using the same computational tool. Uh, if I'm discussing about literature in Czech, uh, I would like to mention also literature uh, in English. Uh, uh, so I would like to say that uh, classic uh, uh, literature is uh, Maccatch on latent class analysis uh, uh, from Sage Publishing. Uh, it is approximately 80 pages uh, description of latent class analysis. Uh, then there is a quite nice book uh, which was edited by Hagenors and Maccatch uh, published in 2002 in Cambridge University Press called Applied Latent Class Analysis. And if you would like to have also description, uh, which is very simply available to Czech students as it was published in a Carolina Publishing House. Uh, uh, so Julia Hauber uh, published uh, in 2008 a chapter about latent class analysis in a book which was edited by Professor Jabek and me. Uh, and this book was called as Advanced Lazarus Freudian Methodology. So uh, this is only the information, also the information, and uh, I would add some more comments uh, that uh, origins of latent class analysis are in discussion uh, uh, from uh, Lazarsfeld and his colleagues uh, uh, from 60s. Uh, so these people uh, originated uh, latent class analysis as the technique. Uh, before we start, uh, uh, to discuss about this technique, about the logic behind, uh, I would like to say uh, that maybe it's a pity, uh, but latent class analysis is not applied quite often in social sciences. And uh, maybe the reason could be uh, that in most of uh, statistical packages, I mean, especially commercial packages such as SPSS, SAS, uh, Stata, or Statistica, uh, this procedure is not applied at all. Uh, that's true still for some packages, or uh, is applied only uh, uh, during last years. Uh, so that's why social scientists uh, usually uh, didn't utilize this technique. Uh, uh, but as I guess uh, you will understand that this technique could be very, very useful, uh, especially uh, for social science applications. So still, uh, uh, implementation in the software packages is not fantastic, uh, but once again, currently, uh, you can apply this technique uh, if you add R package uh, and connection to R package in SPSS or in Gmovie. Uh, in Chesp, uh, there is no application uh, of uh, latent class analysis as a whole. Uh, and of course, if you like, you can uh, also compute uh, latent class analysis directly in R. Uh, there are more packages than PLCA we will be using indirectly here. And uh, according to my opinion, also quite good uh, implementation of latent class analysis uh, can be found in uh, M+, uh, which is commercial package, but uh, uh, at least the basic version is free of charge and also student version uh, is not very expensive. It costs approximately 250 US dollars, if I remember well. Uh, so uh, you can uh, also uh, use this package uh, uh, for these models. And uh, before we start, uh, we would uh, go uh, into, uh, I would say, short historical excursus. Uh, and uh, 
I would like to mention uh, that the first ideas uh, of latent class analysis, uh, but with different name, it was usually coined as latent structure analysis, uh, uh, was uh, related uh, to poor Felix Lazarus Feld and his colleagues. Uh, and uh, first ideas were developed in 50s and first texts uh, were published in 60s. Uh, and uh, the main uh, idea, uh, I would say, was flowing. Uh, in these times, I mean 50s and 60s, uh, and the only option uh, 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 was that if you have set of variables uh, that were observed, uh, and we will discuss about observed uh, variables uh, up to the end of uh, lectures uh, of this course. Uh, so if you have some observed variables and you expect there is some hidden pattern behind these variables, you could apply factor analysis. And uh, maybe that you know something about factor analysis. We will learn quite a lot about factor analysis in next lecture. So, uh, but if you do not know anything, factor analysis is mainly designed for cardinal variables. And if you have some set of correlated cardinal variables, you can have expectation there is something behind the scene, which is called uh, technically as latent variable originally as factor, that's why it is called factor analysis, this technique, and you would like to discover these factors that are behind. I would like to go somewhere into 1910 uh, or uh, similar age, uh, and it was uh, Charles Pearson, originator of factor analysis and also of uh, so-called psychology of intelligence, who discovered that if he tried to compute correlation for tests for kids, for individual uh, domains, such as French language, English language, Latin language, mathematics, and many other uh, domains, these test results were correlated quite closely. And the Spearman was the first one who said, uh, and it was maybe quite courageous uh, statement, that maybe there is something behind what could be called intelligence, which is causing that some kids are quite good at all tests and some kids are quite poor uh, if they are tested uh, in different domains. So it was the basic idea, uh, once again, of psychology of intelligence. It was also basic uh, idea uh, for so-called exploratory factor analysis, as we will be distinguishing between uh, exploratory and uh, confirmatory mode of factor analysis. And uh, nearly the same idea uh, can be applied in social science questionnaire, if you have some set of related questions, usually we call uh, this set as battery of items, uh, but these items in questionnaires are not usually cardinal, but they are sometimes nominal with more than two categories, sometimes ordinal with four, five, uh, or maybe three categories, and sometimes only binary, so it means responses such as yes and no. And if your set of variables is maybe measuring something behind the scene together, but these variables are nominal, ordinal, or binary only. Exploratory factor analysis, at least classical computation uh, procedures uh, for exploratory factor analysis cannot be applied here. And that's why uh, Lazarus Feld and uh, his colleagues uh, decided uh, in 50s and 60s that some, I would say, analogy to factor analysis to these items that were originally only binary. Later, it was also uh, 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 prepared as advanced version for uh, 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 more uh, than two categories should be prepared. And the first option uh, was so-called latent structure analysis. And here you have uh, uh, the reason people's behavior is influenced by some hidden structures, and these can be measured indirectly. I mean by the set of items and original items that are binary. So latent structure analysis is something that I would like to call as basic latent class analysis for binary variables only. So this was uh, the basic input. For simplicity and also 
for easier interpretation uh, today, uh, we will be mainly discussing about these binary variables and about their applications, uh, and also for simplicity, our data that will not be originally uh, binary, uh, we will create these binary variables uh, from, uh, I guess, four categories uh, uh, of original questions. So uh, that's uh, latent class analysis and latent structure analysis. So. Here we are uh, in the slide number five, uh, and here I would like to say that for more than two categories, uh, uh, development of so-called latent class analysis uh, uh, was mainly uh, advanced by Leo Goodman. Uh, I would like to mention that this name is the most famous name in statistics related to categorical data analysis. So it means to procedures that are related uh, to nominal and ordinal variables. So uh, if you like to remember some famous statistician, so for categorical data, Leo Goodman is one of the best uh, according uh, to his name and his famous, uh, uh, his fame, sorry. Uh, there is also some special award uh, uh, for statisticians that are developing uh, categorical data. So there is a, a prize uh, um, uh, which is uh, named after Goodman. Uh, and two names uh, related also to these uh, first advances uh, in latent class analysis uh, is uh, are Habermann and Clock. And basic goal of latent class analysis is following you have set of variables that are present in your data. Let's call these variables as manifest, as we will be using also uh, these names later. Uh, and uh, this set of variables uh, is, according to my expectation, somehow related. You know that if you would like to find relationships uh, for two or more variables that are categorical, maybe you would be applying uh, 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 classical uh, style of contingency table, chi-square test, etc. And you expect that there is something behind the scene what you are indirectly measuring by the set of related variables. To have uh, some, I would say, uh, real life case. Uh, so I would, uh, for the first insight, open data set uh, we will be using uh, uh, today. Uh, uh, maybe I will open it in SPSS. Uh, it will be uh, easier uh, to read data. Uh, and that's a data file about mathematics in fourth grade. And uh, I would uh, go uh, into some description of this data. And I would like to ask you about maybe common sense solution of latent class analysis uh, for this data uh, to have some insight into a real life example. So. Here we have uh, some set of uh, variables. Originally, they are called as A, S, B, M, 0, 1, A, up to F. So six items, uh, uh, the third one up to uh, uh, eight uh, one uh, variable in my data set. And uh, original meaning uh, for these uh, variables was the first item uh, was measuring whether the kid in the first grade uh, of uh, elementary school is enjoying mathematical lectures. <laughs> Next one uh, variable. Uh, was discussing uh, whether I would like not to have mathematics as a whole. Next one uh, was discussing that mathematics or so mathematical lectures are boring. Uh, next one was discussing that mathematics is interesting subject. Uh, and uh, uh, next one, uh, I like uh, mathematics. And next one was uh, that uh, in mathematics, there are important things. So these are original meanings of these items. Uh, and original scales, uh, uh, for agreement or disagreement, uh, were based on four point scale. Uh, one definitely agree, four definitely agree, uh, and disagree, and uh, uh, I, uh, possibility, uh, which was uh, uh, defined as nine, was uh, DK and eight. So here we have some six items. And my question to all of you is uh, that. Uh, uh, if you can find something what could be behind this uh, set of six items, what can be measured indirectly by these six items. How we can call this phenomenon that could be measured indirectly by these six items. Do you have some idea? 
Your attitudes toward math. Attitudes to mathematics, yeah? If I uh, have it. Okay, yeah. So we would be uh, measuring attitudes to mathematics. Uh, maybe uh, I would uh, like to play this game uh, for one more minute. Uh, so if you would be uh, trying to measure uh, this attitude to mathematics, uh, what are your expectations? Uh, what could be attitudes to mathematics uh, uh, for kids uh, from the first grade? Uh, if you would somehow describe these, how many types of these kids, according to their attitude to mathematics, maybe we would be uh, able to discover. So that's my next question. So some proposals. Today, uh, those of you who are in Zoom uh, must help us. Uh, we are here once again in very small limited number. So how many types of different attitudes to mathematics you would expect uh, for these uh, fools graders? So some proposals. Two, three, four, five, what will be these? Uh, so uh, Stepan proposed six uh, and uh, if you're discussing about six, can you give some names uh, to these six types? As, uh, six is quite a big number. <laughs> okay, so names for six. So maybe uh, if I would differentiate only two types for simplicity, this would be the simplest uh, typology. What could be these two types? I am interested in I am interested in mathematics and I am not interested. In yes, math. these would be total opposite uh, uh, types. Excellent. And if there would be, for example, maybe three types, what could be three types? I am interested, I am not interested, and I am kind of interested, like 50%. Yeah, or something like neutral or something like this. Yeah, this could be. So uh, according to common sense, if we would be differentiating these types, uh, the more and more types we will be creating, uh, uh, the more detailed analysis would be. But maybe for interpretation and also uh, for uh, 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 some uh, after uh, analysis, uh, 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 it would be impractical to have six times uh, or maybe more uh, as uh, Stefan proposed, I'd like to say. So uh, that's nice. Uh, thanks for this discussion. So I would once again uh, share the screen. Uh, so uh, currently uh, we are nearly finished uh, our latent class analysis as the next step. I mean, if we will start uh, uh, computation uh, today in Chemovi, uh, we will be discovering two, three, four, et cetera types, and we will be trying to find the best typology for our data. So it will be main goal for latent class analysis. So currently, I guess uh, I can close this uh, SPSS data set as uh, once again, uh, we will be using uh, Jamovi uh, later. And uh, I can go back uh, to the presentation. So the basic goal is that I have set of some variables. They could be binary. They could be with more than two categories. And I would like to find, generally, I would call it uh, C latent classes. So C is number of these latent classes. Uh, uh, for two or more categorical variables. If I'm saying for two, two is minimum, but mostly if I apply real life example of latent class analysis, I would be using more than two uh, categorical variables. And once again, these variables could be binary, that's the easiest, at least for the interpretation, and they can have also more categories. Uh, so I can work with original data, uh, uh, as it was uh, presented currently in mass example, and I can also create binary variables from this only agreement and disagreement. Uh, uh, that's possible. And here we have, uh, and sorry for these equations, uh, but sometimes we need equations uh, in advanced statistics. Uh, so here we have basic equation uh, for latent class analysis. So it means uh, what is behind the scene. So here it is written that individual combinations for some, I would say, contingency table uh, of uh, probability of answering to A 
B, A, B are different questions. So uh, this is the model for two categorical variables only. A, B are question first one, second one, and I, J are answers. I and J answer. I answer for uh, A question, J answer for B question, and X is uh, the abbreviation for latent classes. So we can have one latent class, two latent classes, three latent classes, and latent classes are nothing more than these types. So uh, that's uh, the variable which I try to find, which is behind the scene. And uh, uh, according to this uh, model from latent class analysis, this probability of answering of some type of answer for the first and second question, that's P, I, J, A, B, X, uh, is based on probability to be in some class that's the first part of this equation. So this is probability to be in class T. Uh, X is once again latent class variable, distinguishing individual latent classes. And it is based on probability to be in some class. Some classes can be bigger, some uh, smaller. That's why some can have bigger probability, some can have lower probability. And then uh, the rest two pieces here are called as condition probabilities. Uh, probability that I will answer to the first question A by I answer if I am in T class. That's saying uh, this part. And uh, this next one, uh, simple analogy, probability that I will respond uh, by answer J for the second question B if I am T class. So multiplication by these three probabilities will give me something what is called joint probability of answering I, J for being in class, uh, uh, for individual class. So uh, that's uh, what is behind the scene. And here on the right-hand side, we have, I would say, simple coefficients. These are not uh, truly coefficients, but probabilities that will help us to explain our results of latent class analysis. So results of latent class analysis will be usually a table or sometimes also a picture, which will be presenting these unconditional probabilities. In other words, it will help me to say whether some type is big or not, or the some latent class is big or not. And then these response patterns will help me to understand what is the meaning for individual classes. Uh, we will uh, make uh, three exercises uh, today. So I hope uh, it will be clear for you how we interpret these conditional probabilities of response patterns. So here it is. And here we have uh, once again the same equation, same picture, uh, uh, together with these three circles. So result in LCA will be that I will try to estimate these probabilities, which will help me to say what are sizes for individual latent classes or let's call it types, and what are patterns for individual latent classes. So it means what is the real meaning, substantive meaning for individual latent classes or individual types. Once again, uh, if you go back into our discussion, we expect that for two types of kids, we would find those who are for mathematics and those who are against mathematics. And only the question would be, what would be the proportion in the first grade, whether there would be more for mathematics or against. Maybe we can play a game, but again, what's your expectation before we start computation? Uh, would it be more kids uh, for mathematics or against mathematics in the fourth grade? Uh, once again, these are uh, real life data uh, for Czech kids uh, approximately 10 years old. What's your expectation? So these are data about you maybe. So some expectations about proportion of uh, those who would be liking and not liking mathematics. I dare to say that the, the most will be against the mathematics uh, in the time. Most will be against. Yeah. Expectation. Okay. Okay. Let's see results later. Thanks a lot. So uh, before we start uh, to uh, compute real life example, I would like to uh, show you some. I would say artificial case uh, uh, to understand maybe slightly better what is behind the scenes. So it means what is 
I would say, computational trick behind uh, latent class analysis. Uh, do not be afraid. Uh, there will be no equations behind currently. Uh, it will be only a very simple example. First of all, we would go uh, into Microsoft Excel table, and then uh, we would use Jamovi computation based on these data. Uh, which was prepared by me. So, uh, first of all, uh, I will open uh, Microsoft Excel file, which is called uh, simply Motivation LCA uh, XLS. And uh, if you open this file, uh, it should be uh, like my file. So it means starting with column J currently. So it seems there is something missing uh, in this table. So it's usually uh, Excel is starting from A. Uh, you will see there are some hidden columns here. But uh, uh, here we have uh, the tape, which is described as together. And let's imagine we have here contingency table, uh, which is two times two table. So two rows and two columns. And let's imagine for simplicity, uh, very general and abstract case, that these are originally two questions. Uh, maybe the first option is yes. Second one is no. So I'm combining two questions, yes and no. And if I compute uh, classical results for this contingency table, so here we have uh, real or observed frequencies. Here we have uh, expected frequencies. Once again, compute it if you can check it. Uh, as you take sum of the first column, multiply by the sum of the first row, and then divide it by total uh, number uh, or total sample size for all these columns. And then you can apply chi square test uh, in uh, Microsoft Excel environment. Uh, and uh, by this chi square test uh, procedure, uh, you would compute p value. Uh, this p-value is very, very low one, 2.19 uh, multiplied by 10 exponentiated by the power minus 18. So it is 0 0.000, 17 zeros, and then the first uh, valid value, which is 219. Uh, so if I evaluate this chi square test with very small value, uh, p-value, I can say these variables are dependent. So these are original data, and once again, Original expectation for latent class analysis is that I have at least two related variables. If variables are not related at all, it is not necessary. And I would say it is really impossible to apply latent class analysis. So only for related data, I can apply latent class analysis. And now let's go, I would say, inside uh, uh, the computation, uh, which is behind the scene. And the logic of latent class analysis is that I would like to somehow uh, take these 198 units into some groups, into latent classes, in which every individual latent class or every individual type, there would be no relationship for row and column variable. So ideally, I would like to divide this original contingency table into maybe two separated contingency tables for two latent classes, two types, for which there would be no relationship at all. And if you uh, try to uh, uh, take uh, this table uh, and unhide uh, uh, <coughs> some hidden uh, columns here, uh, so currently here it is. Uh, here we have, uh, so uh, here is group A, uh, group B. Um, so uh, you can see that if I divide uh, my data into this first group A and for second group B, so in total 121 for the first group and 77 for the second group, totally uh, one, uh, 198, so it should work. So I can compute once again chi square test here, and you can see uh, that for all these, uh, they are independent. Uh, I would take also uh, column A, uh, which is test of independence for group A. So if you divide this data into group A, group B, for both of these groups, there is total independence. So this is, uh, I would say, computational trick uh, or uh, goal of latent class analysis to divide data in groups in which my variables would be ideally totally independent 
or at least with the lowest independence. And uh, if you compare the size of group A and group B, uh, you can see that the first group is uh, bigger than the second one, 121 uh, versus 77. And if you compare patterns uh, of responses for group A and group B, so if I say that uh, yes and no questions were applied here, so for group A, if you can see uh, these uh, uh, observed counts, most of people say yes, yes. So I would say that this type or this latent class would be created mostly by those who are agreeing with both questions. And this is just opposite pattern, mostly created by those who are disagreeing. And I could compute probability of agreement or disagreement for the first and second question. And once again, if I go back to my presentation, these would be these conditional probabilities. So uh, that's what will be computed for us in latent class analysis. So this is, I would say, very simple uh, case for motivation, how it works behind the scene. I must say that uh, uh, for real life computation uh, uh, in latent class analysis, uh, it is necessary to use computers uh, as these algorithms are quite uh, computational intensive as many, many repeated uh, uh, procedures. Uh, these are called as iterations must be applied. Uh, so uh, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't uh, compute uh, LCA by hand. Uh, uh, but uh, I guess that by this example, you have at least some idea what is behind the scene uh, and how originally uh, related data are separated into some subgroups. And in these subgroups, uh, uh, there is no uh, relationship at all, or at least there is only small relationship uh, in uh, final sets, which are called once again, latent classes. So I guess I can post these data. And uh, 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 if you would like to see whether it works, so I would uh, take this data uh, uh, in Jemovi. Uh, so I would go into Jemovi and I would open data that are called motivation, uh, I and D. Uh, so here it is, uh, but I must find it on uh, uh, my folder, uh, LCA. Sorry for that. Uh, I guess I would need one more clicking. Uh, so motivation I and D. So here we have a data file. So we have here variable one, variable two, which is row and column variable in Microsoft Excel originally. And once again, I would like to find the pattern that there is some bigger group A for people who are mostly agreeing saying yes, it means code uh, one for my data. And then there is a second pattern of people from crew B, which is more. And these people are mostly disagreeing with both items. So now it would be the first time, I guess, uh, for you to visit the dialogue for latent class analysis. And currently I'm not sure uh, uh, in which package uh, from Jamovi it is included. Uh, I know uh, it is present uh, here. It's no RMM, I guess. Uh, this is the name of the package. So you must go into modules currently and uh, you must find uh, the package, which is according to my opinion, uh, called as snow RMM. Uh, there is also label fresh mixture models for Jamovi. Uh, and if you are online, uh, you should directly uh, click into it uh, and install it uh, uh, into Jamovi. I hope you will be successful. If not, uh, you can follow my steps. So you can go directly into Jamovi library uh, as you didn't install it previously and then find uh, a package which is no RMM and uh, it would be, I hope so, automatically uh, uh, downloaded and installed into your Jamovi. I'm not sure whether it works uh, here on uh, computer, sorry for that. Uh, let me know uh, whether it works on your computer and currently no RMM is installed. <coughs> uh, I can also, uh, uh, say uh, that for next lectures, uh, we will be also using package which is called SEMLJ. Uh, uh, so it will be the next package uh, which will be uh, for us uh, necessary. It works here. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so for those, those of you who are on Zoom, uh, can you install Snow RMM? Is it working? Yes, it is. Okay, so thanks a lot. Uh, so this is the style by how you can add many, many uh, uh, additional procedures uh, into Gemovi. Uh, I must say that if I compare Gemovi with Chesp, uh, there is much more options in Gemovi currently than uh, in Chesp. Uh, and uh, for latent class analysis, once again, there is no option in Chesp uh, at all. So I would go into Snow RMM and last one dialog, which is called latent class analysis. Once again, nearly the same implementation uh, you can find in SPSS. Uh, SSPSS here for latent class analysis is using uh, the procedure uh, from our uh, package uh, POLCA. Uh, so uh, this is nearly the same implementation uh, by uh, through input dialogues and also through outputs. Uh, only uh, in some parts, uh, SPSS implementation is more detailed, uh, but uh, uh, these are very, very uh, minor differences. Okay, so first of all, uh, if you are using this latent class analysis dialog, you need uh, to differentiate, uh, 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 sorry, uh, you need to input uh, at least uh, uh, two categorical variables. So for us, it is V1 and V2, and they will be defined as variables. So I will move V1 and V2. And uh, uh, if you ask uh, for uh, uh, this computation, uh, you can see that Jamovi computed something uh, and uh, uh, automatically uh, or by default uh, GMOV is computing uh, uh, result for two latent classes. You can see it here in the table model fit class two. If you would like to change it but once again uh, that's our goal to differentiate two groups uh, uh, so <coughs> you can go into analysis option and here you can change uh, these settings uh, to different number of classes. Uh, uh, but currently, once again, uh, two is enough. And for outputs, or would say, uh, would like to say for classical outputs, uh, we would like to find once again probabilities and conditional probabilities uh, of uh, latent class membership. So it means uh, whether some classes are big or not and then conditional probabilities of response patterns. And these are tables that are called here probability class. And uh, that's not a very nice name, but the second probability, which is conditional probability of response patterns is called here as probability of variable. Uh, I would say it's slightly, slightly not uh, uh, the best uh, option for description, but take it as it is. And uh, ideally, uh, if you have only binary data, maybe better uh, than these uh, two tables currently we have here uh, two tables uh, uh, which is size of individual classes and uh, estimated uh, conditional response probabilities you can ask also for so-called lca plot uh, uh, this is plot which is prepared by uh, this uh, our package uh, plca which is quite nice and uh, we will go very briefly through all these outputs so first of all uh, you can see uh, that here we have uh, two classes and according uh, to Chemovi, the first class is slightly lower, 0 0.4 approximately for my case, and approximately 0 0.6 uh, is the second class. So now you can have some doubts that uh, group A should be bigger and group B should be smaller, but it seems that in my data or in my output, it is reversed. I'm not sure if uh, we all have the same results as uh, this is a trusted pro procedure. So maybe we can have uh, slightly different results. Uh, do you have the same results or not? The same probabilities and same ordering uh, that the first class is lower by sample size or not? Yes, I have the same. The same, okay, okay. So maybe uh, it is. Uh, it is. it uses uh, the same starting uh, random value for uh, iterative procedure. Uh, but still, uh, this wording group A and group B is arbitrary. So it seems to me that it would work that the first group here would be group B here and group A would be labeled here as group two. And once again, we know that group B is smaller than group A so it seems correct uh, that it would be approximately 40 to 60, yeah? 
So this is the first. And uh, we would like uh, to find whether group which is bigger would be those who mostly agree and group B would be those who mostly disagree with both statements. And uh, we can check it. So let's go into second table. And here you have for the first class, variable one, probability one. So it means uh, if I am in the first class, once again, it is small class, small type, uh, once again, type B in our previous uh, table. Uh, what is the probability of agreement? And you can see it is approximately 0 0.13, but probability of disagreement is 0 0.9 nearly. So those uh, people who are in the first class mostly disagree with the first statement. And for the second statement for variable two, this is nearly the same story. Also, people in this class one mostly disagree. So I would interpret this pattern of the first class, people who mostly disagree with both statements. And once again, this is the same style as I can see here for group B. So that's correctly classified and it seems uh, it works. And let's go into the second class. I guess uh, it is very easy and straightforward. Uh, so sorry for that. It still looks like flipbook, you know. <laughs> so once again, uh, uh, for the second class, mostly agreeing with the first statement and uh, mostly agreeing uh, with the second statement. So these are people who would be uh, uh, discussing as those who agree with both statements. So this says how it works. Uh, so these probabilities could be used for the interpretation. And once again, if you don't like these tables uh, and you have binary data, it is maybe much easier uh, to see LCA plot, which is present here. Uh, I would like only to describe this plot. So here, uh, individual uh, <coughs> dimensions. So on horizontal axis, uh, we have individual classes. So here, this is the first class, and you can find here that uh, the proportion of this class is 0 0.45. Once again, uh, uh, this is uh, the value which is close to this probability, unconditional probability. Second class is uh, slightly bigger, 55 is saying here. And here we have the size here for variable one. This is lower variable and upper variable is variable two. And uh, the size of these columns is uh, the size for disagreement. So if there is big size of disagreement for variable one, variable two, for first class, so it means that the first class is created by those who disagree with both statements. And the same, but just opposite is that size for V1, V2 for the second class is very low. So it means uh, these are those who agree with both statements. So these are only figures from this table graphically uh, described here in the picture. And uh, uh, this is very simple to understand that First class, those who are agreeing. Second class, those who do not agree. Uh, those who agree. Uh, so that's very easy. So please decide whether you would like to read out these tables and interpret results, or whether you would like uh, to read this graphical output. Uh, that's uh, the same information. And the last one information uh, we can use here uh, from this dialog is uh, that we can uh, use save. Uh, and by saving, you can save class membership into your data. So if you click into class membership here and you close this dialog, uh, you can find that according to latent class analysis, for every case, it assigned his or her membership. So it means whether he or she should be in class two or class one. And this result, and uh, it would be for us uh, uh, some uh, small uh, task for second, uh, uh, for next lecture, uh, next week, uh, we can use this assigned membership to some future analysis. So we can discuss 
whether this typology is somehow related to other phenomena, et cetera, et cetera. So we can save this membership and we can use it. You can see for simplicity that patterns one one are usually abbreviated by membership into second group. So it means those who are agreeing with both items. If you go down, uh, those who said no, no, are uh, assigned as uh, uh, group number one. And then there will be some mixture for those who uh, say yes, no, or no, yes. Uh, and they will be uh, discussed uh, true one as one. Uh, and uh, I guess we can have here also pattern one, two, uh, and they are also assigned as one. So uh, that's how it works uh, uh, in uh, Chemovi implementation. So here we are, and I can go very quickly uh, uh, to uh, one uh, very well-known case of uh, results and interpretation of latent class. So, so next one, uh, I would say uh, usage of latent class, and then we will start computation uh, of a, a mathematical uh, example uh, from Tim's data. So here we have a result uh, for a general social survey. If I remember well, original data were from 1982, but general social survey uh, is carried out every year on American adults. And there were four questions uh, that were discussing uh, uh, quality uh, of public opinion research. Respondents were asked whether purpose of this uh, 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 research could be good, it depends or bad, it was the first question, then whether results are precise or not. Then uh, interviewer uh, responded uh, uh, whether, uh, inter uh, whether respondent is understanding or not, or and then whether he or she is interested or not. So these four questions uh, were used for classification of respondents into three classes. So here we have three columns. You can see proportion of these classes. First one is the biggest one. Second one uh, uh, is quite close uh, by its size to the class, uh, class three. And here you have uh, conditional probability. So let's understand what are these classes about. So for the first class, they are mostly saying purpose is good. 89% of these, according to this conditional probability. Uh, mostly they are believing uh, that results of uh, public opinion research are precise. They understand according to interviewers, and uh, they are very interested according to interviewers. So uh, I would say, and I guess uh, that those who apply this typology uh, use uh, the same uh, label uh, for this first class. So these are ideal respondents. Uh, they believe in the research and they understand the questions uh, and are interested. Uh, let's try to interpret the second class uh, for these respondents. And uh, uh, I would like to ask you if you can try uh, to do uh, the interpretation yourself. So if you can help me to say, what would be the label for the second class of respondents? So purpose is mostly good. Precision, yes but uh, it seems they do not understand at all and they are quite interested. What are these people? How we can call these people? Some simple label, let's try. So maybe I can propose my label. I would call these people as believers. As it seems they do not understand the questions uh, but still they do believe in public opinion research. Okay, and uh, I would like once again to ask you if you can help me to interpret the last uh, uh, class number three, uh, purpose mostly bad, uh, no precision, uh, uh, they are quite interested uh, and they do understand. So what is uh, their attitude to public opinion research? So, Colleagues that are uh, via Zoom connected, can you help us? Yeah, via chat, okay, I will try to find it. Uh, pragmatics, uh, I would say they are quite against uh, uh, public opinion research according to my opinion. Uh, uh, so that's it. Okay, skeptics, yeah, uh, it could be. Uh, thanks a lot. So here it is. Uh, 
Uh, and I would like only to mention uh, that uh, there are two types of latent class analysis. Uh, unfortunately, in SPSS or JMOV, only one is uh, applied, and that's exploratory. So it means we will try to discover how many types, how many latent classes are behind the data. Uh, there is also some special confirmatory latent class. Uh, uh, so I can confirm some typology. I can confirm also structure of the typology, etc. But once again, not applied in uh, SPSS or JMOV. And I would go uh, currently uh, into computation, uh, Steph. Uh, so I would open uh, uh, mathematics LCA uh, data. Uh, so here we are, Jamovi. And for the first and simple inside, I would propose that we would take a set of items, which is at the end. Uh, so it means uh, these variables are called as enjoy, not have boring interest like uh, and uh, important uh, should be the last one. So these six items, once again, uh, are originally recoded uh, from items that were on the scale definitely agree to definitely disagree. And here we have only uh, agreement, disagreement, sorry for check labels here. Uh, that's mistypo, uh, but uh, I guess uh, we can say that agreement is so plus and disagreement is uh, uh, so plus. Uh, you can also learn Czech language uh, today, sorry for that. Uh, uh, but uh, for us, maybe more important is uh, that there is some coding uh, that agreement or so plus in Czech is uh, coded as one, uh, so plus is coded as two, and uh, nine is defined as missing value, so it be be omitted. And uh, we know from previous discussion that maybe we can create uh, two classes, three classes, four classes, uh, so it means individual types. And if we would create maybe two classes only, there would be kids for and against mathematics. And we have, if I remember well, expectation from previous discussion, there will be more kids against mathematics. Uh, uh, I hope uh, that I remember well uh, this previous discussion. So uh, we can start to compute. I guess uh, we know nearly everything about latent class analysis uh, for this introduction. Uh, we know how it works in Jamovi. Uh, so I would go simply uh, into the dialog. So once again, snow RMM and I would find latent class analysis here. Here we would take last six items. So enjoy, uh, not have boring, interest, like, and important. I would like to mention uh, that if you like to compute latent class analysis, uh, especially uh, by these dialogues in Jamovi and SPSS, it is usually uh, quite big advantage if you use technical names that are shortage for the meaning of individual variables. That's why I'm typing here enjoy, not have, et cetera, et cetera, as these labels will be included in tables as well as in graphical outputs. So it is quite easy uh, to read results. If I would uh, use some uh, general labels such as A1, A2, A3, it would be complicated stuff. Once again, default output is uh, nearly empty. So I would go into analysis. And for the first inside, I can ask for two classes only. And I would ask for probability of classes, probability of response patterns, uh, called as probability variable, and LCA plot. And uh, in a few seconds, I guess, I would get results. And maybe uh, I will start our discussion uh, by this chart, as uh, it seems to me it will be slightly uh, easier uh, to understand uh, uh, results as tables are quite long in this case. If I have uh, six uh, uh, variables with two options uh, and two classes, I have uh, 24 uh, uh, conditional uh, probabilities and two unconditional probabilities, but I guess uh, that this chart is uh, quite easy to read. Once again, the size for these uh, symbols uh, means uh, uh, usually uh, uh, the level of disagreement. So if I am uh, trying to read these results, I can see two classes are present here. First class, which is lower, approximately one quarter. Second class, which is uh, three times bigger, approximately three quarters. And for the second class, uh, maybe the response pattern is very easy to read. So for enjoy, 
interest like and important, there is nearly strict agreement. And for not to have mathematics, mathematics is boring, uh, uh, nearly strict disagreement. So how I can call this class, which is quite a big one, once again, approximately three quarters of kids. Some proposals. Are those for or against mathematics? The ones against mathematics. Once again, they agree that they enjoy mathematics, interest, like, it is important, and they disagree it is boring and not to have. So they are liking mathematics or they are for mathematics. So once again, our expectation was uh, that uh, uh, those who would be against will be much bigger class, but in fourth grade, still uh, uh, kids uh, like mathematics, at least uh, if they uh, provide their answers into questionnaire uh, of international surveys. Uh, uh, and small class, uh, if you can see, uh, so especially for enjoy, and for like, big disagreement. And uh, for the less, uh, uh, rest, uh, some were behind, uh, some were between. Uh, but still, it seems that these are kids who are mostly against the mathematics. And once again, proportion of these, uh, uh, approximately one and three quarters. If you would like, uh, you can read out uh, in detail these probabilities. But I guess uh, the pattern is quite clear and the result would be the same. And now the question is whether we should differentiate only two classes or more classes. And uh, I propose that maybe it would be better uh, to go uh, to some higher classes solution uh, and compare these solutions and find the best. If you would like uh, to find some, I would say, recommendation in the literature. So these recommendations are usually related to these model fits. And mostly uh, the simplest recommendation is saying, try to compare model fit, which is called BIC. We will discuss about this uh, so-called Bayesian uh, uh, information criteria later, also in structural equation modeling. And the recommendation is try to find the model with the lowest BIC. Uh, but my recommendation is that this BIC is too sensitive and usually they'll recommend you the model, which would be very, very complicated. It means we'll have uh, quite a lot of classes. If I go back uh, to Stepan's recommendation that we should have six classes, I guess that for example, for this data, it would recommend us six classes, but for the interpretation of six classes would be big problem. And not only for the interpretation, but I guess uh, that I, if I would add maybe four or five classes, uh, there would be also small amount of people in individual classes. So it would be also uh, problematic uh, uh, according to sample size uh, for individual classes. So that's why I would propose to compute once again the same uh, uh, analysis and uh, to ask for three classes. So currently, once again, we are performing exploratory latent class analysis. So we are discussing how many classes would be good for uh, this uh, data. So once again, six variables, uh, move two variables uh, in general, uh, ask for three classes currently, and ask for probability for class variables and LCA plot. So, if we compute our results, uh, we can, for simplicity, compare BIC. Uh, current BIC for three classes is approximately 17,900. Previously, it was uh, uh, slightly bigger. So it is decreasing, uh, uh, and we would try to find the model with the lowest BIC, once again, uh, the simplest recommendation. If I would like to see uh, these three latent classes, proportions, first one, nearly 70%, I guess these would be kids for mathematics. And then there are two more classes, 20, uh, so two approximately and nine uh, percent. So I guess that 22 will be still maybe against mathematics. And then there will be approximately one tenth of kids somewhere between uh, as it was discussed previously. We can check uh, the chart once again, here it is. So once again, these on the left, first class, the biggest one, once again, nearly 70% are those for mathematics. If you uh, find uh, just opposite, 
So I guess these two are just against, and these are maybe somewhere between approximately one tenth of kids. And uh, as the last step today, and once again, uh, I would like to say that uh, we would continue uh, at least uh, for some uh, minutes uh, this example next time, I would go once again uh, into latent class analysis dialogue and ask currently for four classes. Once again, I would ask for uh, probabilities of class variables and LCA plot. And I guess uh, we would get even more detailed picture with uh, four classes and maybe that some class would be uh, a very small one or maybe uh, would cause some other problems. So still I'm waiting for my results uh, as uh, this is uh, quite a, a computational intensive procedure. Uh, I'm not sure if somebody uh, already have uh, his or her results. So I hope it would work. It's currently I cannot see any uh, advances in computation. But still, it should be computed uh, as up to six, seven classes. It shouldn't cause any computational problems. So can you see your results currently or still waiting as my computer? So I'm not sure whether my GMOV is properly working. Uh, can you see your uh, results or not? I can see my results, but I can see that there are no variables in your computer. Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. I was too quick. Yeah, you are definitely right. So we would be waiting up to infinite. <laughs> okay, so currently it would work, sorry for that. Uh, so maybe before I uh, finish my computation, so you can uh, inform me about BIC value, we can compare to previous one. What's your BIC currently? So in this model fit table. Yeah, I can find it. Uh, it is uh, 17,840. Uh, previously, uh, it was 17,932. Uh, so it is still decreasing. So we are going in uh, good direction, I would say, from statistical point of view. And if I am uh, comparing uh, these uh, four groups, so still the biggest one would be those uh, for mathematics. Uh, then I expect uh, that the second biggest uh, would be those uh, against mathematics. And then there are quite two small classes. And if I would like uh, to find uh, uh, patterns, uh, 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 so here we have uh, 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 the biggest, uh, second biggest, uh, and then uh, we would find interpretation for the rest. Uh, currently, we can see uh, that uh, at least uh, this class is quite small one, uh, six percentages, and I can for simplicity maybe change computation into five classes, and maybe it would be even smaller uh, to see uh, that uh, it could cause uh, problems uh, by sample size uh, for individual classes uh, uh, and for interpretation. So I hope uh, it would be recomputed quickly. Yeah, here we have uh, even five classes. And you can see that for five classes, once again, uh, there is quite small group here. So uh, before uh, we would go further next time, uh, I would conclude that maybe for the easier interpretation and maybe uh, for quite easy implementation, I would apply this three class model uh, as quite easy to understand for, against, and somewhere in the middle, uh, and uh, uh, it will be enough for us. As we are nearly at uh, the end of the time, uh, so I would be uh, finishing uh, today, uh, but if you have some questions uh, so far, uh, feel free to ask me, and then uh, we would say goodbye for today. Okay, so if there are no questions, I can promise uh, that uh, we would continue discussion about this latent class example next time. We will try to save uh, latent classes into our data 
and we would use uh, this new variable uh, for uh, next data analysis.